What's up everybody, my name is Dwight and welcome back to GeForce Garage. You didn't expect us to do the Ryzen build, and I bet you didn't expect us to use this. So some of you may remember this tweet from last month. Well, we were serious. So here we are with a 1950X Threadripper and a GTX 1080 Ti. The motherboard that we're gonna be using is the ROG Zenith Extreme X399 with an NZXT Kraken X62, a Samsung 960 Pro M.2, 32 gigs of Dominator Platinum RAM, and it's all going inside the Inwin H-Frame 2.0 and of course, black and green. Well, I'm done talking, so let's get to building. Well, it's all built and ready to go. The case was actually pretty easy to work in. The cable management could use a little bit of assistance. I would have liked more cable ties or something to help out there. I had to make use of screw holes and everything like that to bring zip ties through. We do have a glass bag and you want to make it look as good as possible. And since we went with a bunch of high-end parts, we also went with a fully sleeved cable kit from Primo Chill with custom links. That way we can cut down on the excess cables on the back. But no build goes perfectly as most of you know, so we did come across a couple of issues. First off, the case only supports a 240 radiator up top and we have a 280. So since we're no strangers to modding, we took a drill to it and we made it a 280 radiator bracket and it's working fine for us. The only other problem that we had was with our RAM. We accidentally ordered the two 16 gig kit for the 32. So we do have 32 gigs, but we're not gonna make use of the quad channel memory. So in my mind, that just means that we need to order two more 16 gigs and bump this thing up to 64. Something that we made more difficult for ourselves than it probably needed to be was our RGB setup. We have an Aurora LED strip, an Aurora back fan. We have an NZXT AIO and we have the power supply. And everybody wants to be controlled via software on the desktop. However, the problem with the motherboard is that it only has one USB 2.0 header jack on there and two of our RGB systems want to use it. The NZXT one will only light up if it's connected, so it won that battle. So we set up and pre-programmed all of our LED strips beforehand, so they're our nice green color. They're all kind of slightly different hues, but with a little tweaking, we got it where we wanted it. So it looks awesome, let's see how it runs. So this is obviously more than just a gaming CPU, so we'll start off with some productivity stuff first. In Cinebench, it destroyed the top score, which was a 12-core, 24-thread Xeon, getting over double its score at 2877. I also threw together a short video for it to render in Premiere. I put in some Gaussian blur that increased over time and made the crossfades huge. I left all the settings stock, and it rendered the 60 seconds of 1440p footage in a minute and 15 seconds. Now to boot up 3D Mark, which ended up getting a 7520, a little low from where I thought it would be at. So I booted up Player Unknown's Battleground and it was struggling to keep a decent frame rate with my settings at high at 1440p. Then a friend told me that he heard that if you shut down half the cores, it is supposed to play games better. So I downloaded Ryzen Master and activated what they're literally calling game mode. After a reboot, we're down to 8 cores and 16 threads and I ran 3D Mark again and it scored an 8490, almost a thousand points better. Everything is the exact same, but the CPU has half its cores shut down. Then I went back to check to see how PUBG played afterwards, but it turns out it was actually down for a new patch, part of which was to fix some performance issues coincidentally. Dying Light hovered around 90 frames a second at 1440p on Ultra, and World of Warcraft, which can be pretty CPU demanding at times, stayed within 70 to 80 frames per second during dungeons on an ultra wide 1440p monitor with high settings. Well, that about wraps it up. If you guys have an idea for a build, leave a comment down below. If you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you for the next one.